Hi there buds, today we're gonna be making some holiday candy for my neighbors. I thought that that would be like a good get to know my neighbors. I've been introduced to a couple of them so far, but like there's a couple of them that I literally do not know who lives in the house. So I'm just curious who lives there and I thought this would be a nice way to meet my neighbors. So hope you guys enjoy this little video. I think we're gonna be making Christmas crack we're also going to be making peanut butter balls or Buckeyes. We're going to make Oreo balls. We're going to do some chocolate covered pretzels. What else am I doing? Oh, hard candy. We're going to do some like homemade hard candies that Matt always makes. Oh yeah, and I'm going to try to make Divinity. Um, my mom used to make it every single year at Christmas time and it was so delicious, but I've never done it myself and I've heard that it's kind of difficult. So we're gonna attempt to make divinity. So let's get into making some candy. We got these cute little candy bags for all the candy. And then we have some bags for all the neighbors. I think we're gonna do six people, I think is how much it is. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. We're gonna do seven neighbors. So we'll see who's lucky enough to get them. <laughs> and this is the Christmas crack all done and broke up. I've already had some. This stuff is so addictive. It's like salty and sweet and crunchy. I love this stuff. I'm gonna make Buckeyes using this recipe right here, but I'm gonna like triple or quadruple it because we need a lot more than six balls. Don't mind this cracked iPhone. This is like my backup phone. This is my old phone and I just keep it um, for when my phone dies, which is like right now. And this is really easy. All we have to do is basically mix together three of the ingredients. We're gonna mix together our melted butter. I don't think I've ever used so much melted butter in my life. That is three cups of melted butter. But I've also never made candy like this, like in such big batches before, so. Makes sense. How the hell? Do I not have enough peanut butter? Like literally, this isn't enough. I need nine cups. This is an eight cup thing and it's not even full. So I have to order some more peanut butter really fast. I think I got enough peanut butter now. I've never seen so much peanut butter before in my life. All my dogs are like, ooh, I smell the peanut butter. I smell that. Are you making me something? Nope. Okay, I don't know if I thought this through very well because that is so full, but we're gonna try. Oh, I saw the add powdered sugar to this. So I'm probably gonna have to like dump this after it's mixed, but please don't make a mess. Whoa! Okay, we can't do that. Yeah, we can't do that. No, 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 no. Why do I always make such a fucking mess? We're just gonna mix this up while it's still melted butter, you know what I mean? At least get these two combined up. And then I'll grab another bowl and we'll add the powdered sugar because it's a lot of powdered sugar that gets added to this. And I know that it's not gonna fit in this bowl. At least this part is going well, you know what I'm saying? This is the absolute largest bowl that I have. I'm hoping that that'll fit all of this, plus 15 cups of powdered sugar, which is these two large ass bags. I think I'm just gonna do half at a time. I think that's the smartest way to go about this, right? Yeah, could you imagine if I would've tried to do all of that at once and wouldn't work? Ooh, I just thought of something while I'm doing this. I could go ahead and add that other bag to this batch and then just mix it with the thingy because this is hard. Like, this is um, taking a lot of muscle because it's such a big batch and peanut butter is very dense. I'm only gonna add like half the bag of powdered sugar at a time when mixing it with this because we saw how that stand mixer went last time and I don't want to Oh my gosh, okay, that's perfect. Ugh. Not making a mess. Okay, so 
we're going to stop it. And we'll add the other half of them. <gasps> I hate when that happens. Like, this sucks. At this point, we're just going to mix it up like using our hands because we're going to have to form these using our hands anyways. My hands are clean. Sometimes your hands are just the best tool. Okay, I would say this bowl is well mixed. Now let's mix up the other one. Now we need to roll these into balls and then we'll freeze them for 20 minutes. I feel like I have vastly overestimated the amount I need. Now let's roll them to make them super nice and even and pretty. Just like that, we have to do that to all of them because we want them to freeze that way. That is one sheet down and two more to go and then I stop to scoop some more. It's gonna take forever, this is a workout. Pretty much fit it all. There's just like very little bit left, but that's gonna be it. And into the freezer they go. All right, it's time to melt our chocolate. I have a bag of chocolate chips here and I added a tablespoon of vegetable oil. That's supposed to just thin out the chocolate a little bit, make it smoother, easier to handle when you're dipping things into it. And then I have a parchment lined baking sheet right here, which is what we're going to put our peanut butter balls on. And our chocolate is nice and melted. Now it's time to dip our peanut butter balls. What I like to do is use a fork. Kind of get the chocolate all the way around, but leave the center of it exposed. Just like that. Lift it up. And then shake. And then to remove it from the I just use a spoon. spoon. Down it goes. And that's our first buckeye. Now time to do it to the rest of them. And these are the finished peanut butter balls. Hi there guys, it's the next day and it's time to make my favorite thing to make, Oreo balls. You're going to need 36 Oreos, an 8 ounce pack of cream cheese softened, you'll need some white chocolate to coat your Oreo balls in, and some regular chocolate for decorations. I like to do a little sprinkling of regular chocolate over the white chocolate just to give it a little bit of a design. It makes them look like little truffles. They're so cute. These are super easy to make. All you have to do is blend the Oreos up, combine the cream cheese, and then dip them in white chocolate. And let's get this started. I have the 36 Oreos in our blender. All we have to do is add the lid and blend them up. I'm just going to add this to the stand mixer and I'm going to do this a second time so that we can do two batches at once. Now all we're going to do is add our two packages of cream cheese that is already softened up. If it's not softened up, it's not going to combine together. So make sure that your cream cheese is soft. Now all you do is you add your paddle attachment and you mix this up together. just gonna hand mix up this clump of cream cheese right here. Or by hand mix up, I mean just sort it through the mixer and restart your mixer because it can do it. It'll make like a stiff batter consistency. Now all we have to do is roll these up, refrigerate them, and then we dip them in chocolate. These are so good. They're so simple, but they're so good. I've run out of parchment paper, so these little silicone mats are gonna have to do. I'm glad that I have these. Now it's time to just roll up your balls. I'm gonna use a little scooper to make them evenly sized. And we're basically doing the same thing as we did with the peanut butter balls. I mean, they're balls, so. 
same thing. Well, that's the first bowl of batter down. I'm gonna go ahead and place this tray in the freezer and go ahead and get the second batch started. All right, second burst, same as the first. We're about to roll these out again. Second batch, let's go. And that is the second patch ready to go into the freezer. And see how smooth that chocolate is, how it just drizzles. That's what you want. Now it's time to dip them. These are a lot easier than the peanut butter balls because you're not trying to leave any of it exposed. You just are trying to cover it completely. And you could also alternatively spoon the chocolate over. which honestly I think is going to work better for these because you want a thick layer of chocolate. I think that's going to give a nice thick layer. All right, these are coated. Time to put these in the refrigerator. I'll grab the second batch, coat them, and then we will drizzle these with milk chocolate. And the second tray is done. Now time to put it in the freezer, and now we'll put milk chocolate on them. And now the fun part, I'm just gonna take a fork and I'm just gonna splatter the chocolate all over it. Actually, I'm gonna use a spoon. <laughs> the fork's not gonna do well. Yeah, that's what I want. I think that looks so much better than before. I don't know, I just feel like the little swirls of milk chocolate just make them look more professional. I don't know, it looks kind of messy right now, but individually, they look so much better. And those are our completed Oreo balls. I think they look really, really pretty. I'm very happy with how these turned out. Chocolate covered pretzel time looks so good. Using like a drying rack, it's the best way because then you don't get like a big puddle of chocolate. They actually look so cute. These look so good. Now I'm saying this in the most humble way possible, but I think I've mastered literally everything thus far. Now it's time for the challenge. I've never made divinity before. I've seen my mother make it growing up so many times and she used to complain about how some years it would be really good, some years it would be really bad. It was one of the most difficult things to make, so we're gonna try to make divinity. I got sugar because I thought I was gonna need a ton of sugar for all this candy and stuff. Look how big this bag is, like. I've never seen a bag of sugar this big. Like, we're not gonna need sugar in so long. Let's get to trying to make some divinity. Um, I don't know if this is really an instructional video because this is my first time making it, but I'll show you guys me making it. This is the recipe I'm following, but I'm gonna probably double it at least, so. It doesn't say how much the recipe makes, so we're gonna just double it first, try that, and then go from there. And literally the first instruction says, make egg whites and then let them sit at room temperature for 30 minutes. So, I guess I gotta make some egg whites and they're just gonna sit, so not that exciting to start. <laughs> That's what the egg whites look like so far. They're nice and fluffy, and now to let them sit for 30 minutes. In this large saucepan, I have my sugar, my water, and my light corn syrup. Now we're gonna bring this to a boil, stirring constantly. It is now boiling. It says now heat it over medium heat and cook it without stirring until it reaches 252 degrees. So 
Sorry, my memory card died. Now that it's reached a boil, we have to wait for it to get to 252 degrees. So you have to use a candy thermometer and just kind of wait it out. And there we are, 252 degrees. Now that we've reached that point, we have to pour this slowly over the egg whites as the mixer is spinning. So I'm kind of scared about this. Like we're gonna be super duper careful, okay guys? All right. I think this is going well so far. Oh my god, I hate that this is like so high up. have to add this last bit. Okay. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh. There's still like just a little bit left. Oh. Now we are supposed to let that mix for five to six minutes until it comes together. Right, so that's kind of how it looks so far and I'm kind of thinking that looks right now but next thing to do is to add our chopped pecans. I got two cups and I'll add that to it as soon as I get this off the thing so that we can fold it in with a spatula. And it's important to not over mix during this part. I want to keep this light and fluffy. Now we spoon this out onto parchment paper or I'm going to be using my little wax sheets and let it sit at room temperature. Now we're supposed to immediately put heaping spoonfuls of this onto the wax paper. They're not gonna rise or anything, so you can keep them pretty close together. They're just gonna dry and keep their shape. That's one tray down. I'm so impressed with how much this is yielding for just doubling that recipe. It makes sense to make a lot of something when it's like difficult, you know what I mean? All right, and that's the second tray of divinity. You're supposed to just let these sit at room temperature until they get dry. It'll take about 45 minutes and then you store them in an airtight container. And that is all the candy that I'm going to make. Matt is going to make some hard candy tomorrow, but that's everything that the neighbors are going to get. Hope you guys enjoyed this little cooking video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what your favorite Christmas candy is or what you make every single year, because I think I'm gonna be remaking all of these because they all turned out really, really good. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. And now my refrigerator is full of candy. Candy, 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 candy. Candy, 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 candy. And then if we come over here, more candy.